I once had a family, but as you should already know, all good things come to an end. I had no choice but to live with my father. It was great at first, but I started questioning why my mother left me. I would occasionally ask when she would come back, because I missed her. She was my mother. My father would always dismiss the question and change the subject always. Soon my father married another woman. My father started becoming more distant ever since he met her and let spend less and less time with us each day. It seems like she was taking him away from us. She always bosses him around a lot and he listens to whatever she says just to make her happy no matter what. And sometimes I think that she controls him. They just argued about every single little thing and it got so bad that it would turn physical and that's the days I got scared. I hid in my room and cried. It started to become an everyday routine where she starts to bitch at my father every day and I could do nothing. I felt horrible to let my father go through this. My stepmom loved to smoke a lot. She also so, um, bought some drugs from her friends' houses. And, well, they were like marijuana and cocaine and stuff. She always bought them from friends she had. And she would do it on her couch. She would do the drugs on her couch in front of us. She used to start buying alcohol and every night she would try to get drunk. She used to always sell her drugs to her friends when she, they didn't have enough. And she got money out of it. That was her way of making money. And she used that money to buy herself stuff. We didn't get much food in the house because my stepmother always controlled the money. My father would always give her his paycheck all the time. So she had more because she knew what to do with it. And those, that money would be wasted on alcohol and cigarettes. We would barely have stuff for us. As I got older, my father started acting more strangely towards me. He started paying more attention to me, but it wasn't the attention I wanted. He tried getting me alone into rooms with him, and then when we were alone, he would try doing sex. He was he would try doing things to me. But I always tried to get away. And I tried staying distant from my father then. I tried telling my stepmother, but it just ended with a slap in the face and me having to run away. She never really believed me when I tried to tell her what he did, nor my brother would have believed me. I felt like I had nobody. At school, I started opening up to a therapist, and she was a school counselor, yet I still thought of her as a therapist. She was really kind, and she really seemed to understand what I was going through. I started telling her every little thing that I was going through and how I felt. And when I started telling her too much, she changed. She suggested a mental facility would be the best for me. But I was scared at first. I was kind of excited because I'd be away from my father and my stepmother because my stepmother also started becoming abusive. I was kind of glad to hear that I was going to go to another place with other kids and I was happy, but something was when I got transferred to the mental hospital after school, since I left school early, um, we started at the door and we waited for the waiting room. And then I had to tell my problems for a few hours to a psychiatrist. But the one thing I didn't tell is what my father did, because I didn't think it mattered, because it was in the past. I started to talking. I started to talk with one of the guys there. He was sleeping first, but when the nurse came to give her our food before we went to the facility uh, the seventh floor he woke up and well me and him started chatting while sitting at the table i started questioning him about why he was here and i know a bit about his past then and it seemed a bit similar to mine he had a father that was always drunk and hit him occasionally and well me and him started becoming friends we went to the mental seventh floor together and well, they split us up in two hallways, the girl's side and the boy's side. I sat in the waiting room with a few other kids. There were only like three that were waiting to be getting a room in the mental hospital and or the seventh floor, whatever you want to call it. But 
I was asking if I can get some paper and a pencil, but they declined on the pencil because they were afraid I was going to cut myself since they seen the cuts on my arms. They said I had to prove myself to them, but till then I had to use crayons to color and draw, which was really hard for me. My first trip was to the mental hospital wasn't so bad. I only stayed for three days, but th there was this last time. I went to mental hospitals 17 times, yet the last one I went to was a behavior center where my best friend died. The sad part is she looked a lot like my little sister, Reagan, my stepsister, which is my stepmother's daughter. Well, even though she was still my stepsister, I treated her like a real sister because I cared about her. And that girl who was five, she committed suicide in my dorm. She was my roommate. Before then, she asked me to draw a picture of her family while she was describing them. She missed her family so much and didn't want to be taken away from them. But when she was at the mental facility, I learned more about her and she said that she was framed for throwing a padlock at her sister and she didn't. Her sister wanted to blame her, but I don't, even if that's true or not, that little girl shouldn't be where I was. The night she died, I looked at her. I looked at her body and because the nurses and doctors were rushing in. In my room, I was curious of what happened, so I woke, I woke up from my sleep, and I rushed to the bathroom where everyone else was, and I saw her. The five-year-old girl I got to know yes only yesterday committing suicide. I always had thoughts of what her parents would think if they saw At that moment, I knew that every single person I ever care about will someday die. And I got a bit emotional. I was like, am I going to die here too? Because I wasn't in the best shape either. I felt sick because the only person who really understood me was gone. Just like that. Just a snap. They were gone that night. They passed. I had to look away from her body because she looked too much like my little sister. A fight broke out the other the next day because some girls some girls said someone's trigger word that reminded of them their grandpa raping them. And a fight broke out. She was screaming, banging her head, and then she attacked that person who said the trigger word. Anyways, I've after I've been to the mental hospital seventeen times, that last time I just I didn't stop trying but I started to hide it. I started hiding it from the world that I, I was clearly had a problem with myself and up and nobody really believed it, so I learned to stay silent about my problems. I went back to school and turns out that my bullies still didn't care. They continued bullying me to the point to where I started cutting worse because they would start doing physical harm to me and they started saying things like, no wonder why your mother left you. Because they started saying things after that of they kept counting reasons why my mother could have left me and they weren't good ones and I just thought that she left me for a good reason because it was my fault that she left me so I kind of started to develop a mindset to hate myself all I wanted to do was torture myself every single day of <sighs> because honestly I didn't I hated myself then too much happened and I didn't do anything about it and I always had that mindset if my mother didn't love me who will and like why should I love myself if I let all this bad shit happen and not do anything about it so I started believing every word the people said about me there was this one girl who thought my cuts were fake and I just said yeah they are it doesn't matter I just like drawing them and then I started developing a new hobby, drawing on myself with a blade, of course. I started making art all over my body with cuts. As things progressed worse and worse, my father continued being the same. So has my stepmother. I had no way escape to escape. And well, what I thought was my last na my last time at a mental hospital was untrue because after 
everything that happened, I started to try killing myself every single day, every single fucking time, and never succeeded. Today, I have tried 49 times to end my life, and all of them failed. I guess that just proves how much of a failure I am. The first trip to the mental hospital, I saw my mother for the first time in years. She visited me, and she was in tears when I woke up from the hos in the hospital bed. I woke up, and I looked at my cuts, and they were deep. I could actually touch my bone, but I looked back at my mother, and she was in tears. She hugged me really tight and said that she loved me. I believed it. She went back in my life for a while, but then left again. I felt broken. I lost my mother twice, and both times I thought she cared. I started to believe that the only way I could see my mother is to go to a mental hospital so she can visit me. So sometimes I would try to die, just not on purposely, but to like try to go to a mental hospital again just so I could see my mother's face one more time. I ran away from home one day because I was tired of the same thing happening every single day. searching for me and when they found me they I told them everything that I've been through and they sent me to DSS and I had to stay to a DSS in a DSS place for a while. It, it wasn't a long while, it was a few hours, but the DSS lady kept calling every family member I have, seeing if they would take me and my brother in to keep us for a bit for a bit. But none of them said yes. Not even my mother. But my, they called my grandmother because she was going to be the last resort. And if my grandmother didn't take us, then we would have to be split up into two different families in foster care. And I really did not want to lose my brother. So I begged and begged the DSS lady to call my grandmother sp and spam her phone because the first time she didn't answer. But when the DSS lady called her again, my grandmother answered.
she caught on to me because she never showed up. 